And here we are. Let's start our Luna Yoga with the playlist again. Down here, we're gonna do about a 20 minute yoga routine. So make sure you've got your mat. And a place to exercise, have some water nearby. Again, this is Designs for Zen Yoga. And I am going to be sharing a fruits basket yoga themed around the zodiac since we just went through Lunar New Year. And there is a lot of really fun stuff that we're going to do. So to start off with, if you haven't heard about Fruits Basket and specifically Hatsu, his name is Hatsu Haru Soma, and he is the ox of the Chinese zodiac, which is more appropriate because welcome to the year of the metal ox. Due to the influence of the ox, Haru is a yin and yang personality. And although he's calm and placid, he can get really angry when provoked. Oxes are the hard workers in the background. They're intelligent and reliable, but they don't demand praise. This yoga session will rely on both the yang and the yin, starting with the yang side of a zodiac yoga session, and then it'll end with the yin or the black side. So we're gonna do a guided meditation, which is something new. I've done a couple of body scans, but never a full meditation. So again, if the audio does have major issues, I can switch to my laptop mic before we go to that piece. So continue to let me know in chat if there's any major problems. As we go forward through this, I hope you can find balance in your relationships with the animal poses for each of the 12 zodiac animal characters. So now that you've found your comfortable seat, you've got your yoga mat, any aids that you may need, blocks or straps, and you'll probably want a blanket at the end, and again, maybe some water if you need it. We're going to start just by doing some breathing. So roll your shoulders back and down in your easy, comfortable seat, wherever that is. First, just notice your breathing. Notice if there's any lightness to the breath if you're holding it in your chest. And if there's any tightness, focus on relaxing it. Make it to deepen your breasts. Maybe placing your hand in your belly as you start to inhale and exhale, finding deepness and fullness in your breath. And wherever you are, continue to breathe, perhaps starting to deepen your breath and come to an even breath. We're going to go through a box breath if it works for you. So on your next inhale, we're going to count. Inhale, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. And hold out, two, three, four. In, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. And hold it out, two, three, Four. In. Hold. Exhale. And hold. And continue in. Maybe going at your own pace, whether it's slower or faster. Finding what you need to calm down. Perhaps closing your eyes. Focusing on each inhale, drawing in fresh, clean air and energy. 
and every exhale releasing any negativity, tightness, or pressure that you're feeling right now. One more cycle of breath. And when you finish that cycle, come back to your normal breathing and notice how differently you feel, if anything. In Design for Zen Yoga, this is all you need to do. If at any time you find yourself struggling, come back to your breath. Find that peace. And as we go forward through today's session, again, only do what's right for you. We practice Bob Ross style yoga here, where we will be doing what works for you. There's no wrong way. There's no wrong pose or adjustment that you can make. As long as there's no pain, you'll do fine. And with that, we're going to begin by removing any dangly jewelry or anything else so that'll get in your way. We're going to start now by just doing some warm up. So take your hands and shoulders, roll them back a couple of times, and then inhale, arms up above you. Holding them up, notice if you can pull your shoulder blades back and down, really opening yourself up. Then scrunch your arms up all the way again, and then pull those shoulder blades down. Exhale, arms down. Inhale, back up. This time we're drawing your palms to heart center as we set our intention for today. Think of what you need to get out of this class. For me, it will be relaxation that I offer, or you may choose any other intention for today's practice. And we're going to seal it with two breaths. First a deep inhale, and an exhale. And then a big inhale, and let it all go. And then inhale, arms up. Exhale, twist to one side, going as far as you'd like. Then inhale, both arms up. Exhale, other side. Inhale, up. And exhale, over, going at your own pace, whether that's fast or slow. If you know me, I like to go slow and pause on one side and just twist. And then slowly find my way to the other side. And maybe linger if you have any tightness. Or maybe you want to go fast today. Every practice is different. And once you've gone through that, we're going to start our zodiac. Starting a little out of order so that we end with the ox. Through tiger. If you've been with me before, we're going to start with lion's breath. So for lion's breath, it seems funny. And don't worry, because I can't see you. What you do is you inhale, and when you exhale, you stick your tongue out, you roll your eyes back, and just let everything go. So I'll show you, then we'll do one together and laugh, and then we'll do a real one to cleanse. So this is lion's breath, and we'll call it tiger breath for today. <sighs> okay. Deep inhale, exhale, <sighs> and then cleanse, and here we go, deep inhale, tiger breath, <sighs> good job. And now we're going to go into cat-cow, we're going to start and end here, so you can do seated cat-cow which is where you move your chest forward for cow and to exhale and bending your chest, you're doing cat. And you can do it again in any seated position that your legs want to be in. Or if you're with me, we're going to go into tabletop, so all fours. And then we're going to exhale into cat and inhale into cow. When you're doing this, make sure your shoulders are shining Pressing your chest forward when you're doing cow. And when you're doing cat, making sure to arch your back. Maybe moving your neck if it's comfortable, but again, only do what's right for you. 
going at your own pace and maybe inviting some movement if that's what speaks to you. And wherever you are, we're also going to be doing a little bit of our leg warm-ups. So if you're seated, find a way for you to stretch your hips. Maybe that's by going into a butterfly or doing one leg at a time and stretching out. And if you're with me on all fours, we're going to start by finding balance, pressing our hands and knees and backs of our feet down. And then inhale, step back and just do a little lunge like you're in a racer's position here and just stretch the back of your legs. Breathing here, making sure that your palms are not past your shoulders and that your hands are shoulder width apart. And if this feels too much for your wrists, you can ball your hands into a fist and stay on fists, or you can use blocks. Again, we've done a block workshop in the past, you can find on YouTube. And when you're ready, we're going to lift this leg up, flexing the toes here. So you're looking down if you can, neutral neck, and then you're gonna take your leg and bend your knee. And just feel how that feels, try and keep your balance centered. And then tuck your knee under, and then stretch it out at your own pace and take a break if you need it. And then the next time you pull it in, just hold it there and tuck and curl with your back just a little more. And then without putting your knee down, if you can, open to the side so you're doing a clamshell kind of move. We also call this fire hydrant. And then you're welcome to do any circling of the hips and legs that you want. Again, focusing on your balance here trying not to get your body too far off center and if you want you can even do some frog strokes kicking out this is all about warming up your hips in any way that you want today and finally we're going to place our foot back down in that lunge notice how different it feels breathing and then pull it in Find your center again, and we're going to do the other side. So again, exhaling, stepping back, going into your lunge. And from here, breathing. And then lift your leg, flexing your toes, holding here. And then maybe bending your knee and kicking it back, just noticing your movement and keeping your balance here with your gaze down to the mat, neutral neck, and then begin to kick your knee under and do a couple of those crunches. If you want that option, you can lift the opposite arm here. It's your practice. And the next time you swing under, tuck it in and hold it tight for a breath. And then send it back. And then pull it in and we're gonna try and open up to the other side. Doing your fire hydrant on the other side. Holding here. And then start to do some hip circles going both directions. Finding movements you need today. And maybe again doing that frog stroke. So pushing back. And wherever you are, do any last stretches before planting your foot back behind you again. Noticing the differences here. And then pull your feet, and then we're going to sit back on our feet. Again, use a block if you need to. We're going to come into hero's pose, which is going to be the rabbit. So you're sitting on your heels. If you want, you can tuck your toes for a very, very... Uh, big toe stretch and it'll be intense on your feet. If it is too intense, you don't have to. Shoulders back, hands down, looking forward. Feel like you have little ears reaching up to the sky in the rabbit hero pose. Breathing. Next, we're going to go into dragon. For that, you're going to go into a lunge. So maybe you come back to all fours. 
And then you're going to take one foot forward, so it's like a low lunge, and you can stay here, finding that power and poise of the dragon. Or if you want to, for a more deeper stretch, you can plant your hands and lift your back leg. And if this is good, you can stay here. Or you can also lower down almost into a lizard, but instead of a lizard with your hands on the inside of your leg, you're just gonna stay over your leg and fold over. So as it makes sense, dragon is similar to lizard. And wherever you are, again, no pain. Breathe in here. And the option for a twist here, either twisting over your knee if you're doing a lunge. So looking towards the leg that's forward. Or if you're down, maybe planting one hand and opening up. And then come back to all fours, however you need to. And we're gonna go into a wide-legged child's pose to rest before we do the other side. So wide legs, feet together, and then walk yourself down. Again, using a block or a pillow to hold you up if you need to, or finding another resting pose that works for you. And on your next breath, start to come out of it. Go back to your fours. And we're going to do the other leg. So maybe extending back and then stepping forward. Finding your lunge on the other side, whether that's the low kneeling lunge or placing your hands on both sides of your feet and stepping back. Staying in this lunge or perhaps folding over your knee. Finding your dragon that works on this side and it may be different. Breathing here. And now the option for your twist. So again, if you're a low lunge, turning towards that leg that's forward, using your arms wherever it works for you. And if you're down in your dragon, maybe planting one hand and then opening up. You can do one side or the other. You'll notice one twist is deeper than the other. Only doing what works for you. And wherever you are from here, we're going to go down onto our belly. So we can come back through our, our four legs, our tabletop here, and then lower yourself down if this works for you. And if not, find your modification. First, just laying flat. Maybe rest your head on your hands. And then we're going to go into snake, which is cobra. For that, you just barely lift your hands and your belly from the mat. That's it. Just a little, little bit. And then let it all down. And we'll do one more. Inhaling, just lifting your chest and your hands a little bit. Just hovering there. And then let it down. And if you want here, you can find your way through a flow. Or you can find some way to get back, maybe going through child's pose or down dog. Wherever we are, we're going to meet in a forward fold. So from child's pose, I'm going to come up and tuck my toes under, pull my knees in, and almost do a little down dog and walk my hands, my feet towards my hands, just like this. And from your forward fold, just hang there. Just hang there. Let your neck go. And then wherever you are, we're going to inhale and halfway lift. Don't lock your knees here. Just notice where you are. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. And I'll adjust here, and you're going to be coming into Mountain Pose. So that was Snake, and now we're moving into Horse, which will be Goddess Pose. So we'll stay in Mountain Pose for just a moment. Your hands will be down, shoulders back. 
Notice your feet, make sure they're shoulder width apart. Feel the grounding between your feet and the ground itself. And wherever you are, breathe here for just a moment. Maybe even close your eyes and notice your balance. And then we're gonna step wide and we're going in the goddess. So your feet are wider now. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, splay your arms open, bringing your elbows like goalposts. This is option number one. And option number two, you start to squat. And it may be awkward or it may be very smooth, but you want to get into a pose like this. See, so like a little cactuar. Holding here in goddess or horse. And if you want, you can try your hands in a different position if that works better for you. This is horse. And next we're gonna be going into goat or sheep. So for that, we're gonna first straighten our legs and go into a wide-legged forward fold. Again, let your head loose here. Notice how differently this fold feels. Maybe it's better for you. Maybe it doesn't work as well. You can always change. And when you're here, I'm gonna ask you to try and plant your hands. And if you need to bend your knees, go ahead. And we're gonna do a little walking for our goat. So it's almost like you're doing a down dog, walking your hands forward and back. And then maybe you start to do hand and foot at the same time. And go to the top of your mat and then go backwards. Really focus on slow motion, noticing how you change and shift your weight like a goat climbing a mountain. Or if you wanna do this standing, you can do it standing and just notice how your body feels as you shift your weight in our little mountain goat. And wherever you are, do it back and forth as much as you like. And then we're gonna come into monkey. So find the middle of your mat, staying in that forward fold, and then inhale halfway lift, exhale fold. And then we're gonna go all the way up again, coming into your mountain pose. Then hands up, inhale, exhale, draw to center. We're doing a small squat now, monkey squat. So in a monkey squat, you keep your feet closer together. And here, if you can, you can put your elbows against your knees. Again, you can sit on a block if you have a block. Or you can just go into a seated pose if that works better for you. And if you're with me, we're going to do the bonus monkey demon squats. If you remember our demon slayer I did with the cosplay and yogis. So for that, you're inhaling and opening up, lifting onto your toes. Exhaling, diving forward. Inhale, opening up. And exhale, diving forward. I am staying on my toes here. I am really shaking. This is monkey. And then wherever you are, we're gonna go back down to our forward fold to rest. And then we're gonna go into rooster. So for that inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Inhale, coming all the way up. And then coming down to mountain for rooster, we're gonna go back up, look up like you're looking at the sun. And then if you can, you can take your hands in prayer pose or put them behind your back. Or if you wanna be a real rooster, you can put them on top of your head. So you're standing up, pretend I'm standing up, and you've got your little rooster comb and you've got your wings out. So find whatever you need to do a looking up at the sun like a rooster. <laughs> and then exhale, arms down. And all the way down. So we're folding again. And this time, if you want to do a flow, we can do a flow. We're going to meet at the back of our mat in child's pose or down dog. So for me, I'm stepping back with one foot and I'm going to go through my flow. So I'm in plank. Lowering through Chaturanga, inhaling to up dog, and exhaling to down dog. Guess what our next animal is? And if you guess dog, you're right. <laughs> so we're going to do one more flow. Inhale, one leg up, stepping through into a low lunge like we did before. We're going to hold it here for a moment before stepping back into plank. And again, doing our flow and modify if you need to with your knees down 
or against the wall, up dog, exhale, down dog, hold for a breath, opposite leg up, exhale, step through, looking up in your lunge for a breath, then step back, plank, chaturanga, one more time, up dog, and down dog, or child's pose, those are our dogs. <laughs> Next, we're going to do pig. We're almost done. This is the hardest one. And again, find a modification if you need. So we're going to start on all fours. We're going to do dolphin, or you can just do another down dog. So for dolphin, you take your hands and you put them in a triangle in front of you. And then you tuck your toes and lift your hips. And again, if this is not available, find some other stretch that reminds you of a pig. This is really intense. You can even do dolphin push-ups where you go forward and back. These are really intense and I do not like them, but that's why they're so good. Think of a pig wallowing in the mud, just sticking its nose down. And wherever you are, we're going in a child's pose for rats. So t wide legs, tuck your feet under and go down into your child's pose. We have one left. Which one is that? It's the ox. So we're going back into cat-cow one more time, either seated or on all fours. Exhaling the cat and inhaling the cow. Notice how different your body feels after we've gone through all of the zodiac animals. And if you want here, maybe you do a little extra stretch here, looking from side to side, feeling the metal ox, the burn from that whole workout. And wherever you are, we're gonna go onto our back to start to cool down. For me, I'm gonna go through my favorite boat pose, holding my body up as I lower down. And then we're going to pull our knees in, give ourselves a big hug and rock around. And if you need a different stretch to cool down, you can do that now. For me, I'm going to put one leg forward and down, hold the other knee in. Maybe you do some circles with your ankle both ways, noticing how different your hips feel. And then on an exhale, twist using one arm to guide the leg across your body, keeping your shoulder blades on the ground. Breathing here. Remember, you can use a block or pillow under your knee, or you can use a strap around your leg. Find what works for you. And hold it here for just another couple breaths. And we'll begin to untwist, pulling your knee in, and then exhale, switch legs, maybe giving the other ankle a twist. And when you're ready, start to go into a twist on the other side, taking your knee over your body, keeping the shoulder blades down, finding what works for you. Maybe looking the opposite direction and breathe. And then draw your knee back in. Give yourself a hug. Pull the other knee back in. Find any other movements that you need. We're going to do three bridges and then we're going to be done. So if you need anything else, do that now. If you're with me, planting your feet and heels by your bottom. You're going to take time here to feel your shoulder blades and hips. For the first bridge, just barely lift your hips. Notice how your body shifts as you lift those hips. And then exhale down. For the next one, do a full bridge. Inhaling, pushing up, holding here. Maybe draw those thighs together. If you have a block, you can put it between your thighs here. Keeping the shoulder blades down, pressing with feet and hands, and exhale, let it down. 
And for the last one, you can do wheel if it's in your practice, so if you're with me, inhale and then exhale, press into your last bridge. Really think of yourself as a bridge, allowing water to flow underneath you, guiding your breath, and then exhale, come to stillness. And as I promised, we're going to go into a very long guided meditation, Savasana. So at this point, if you want to make yourself a comfy little bed, go ahead. I have, from some of our workshops, some blocks. So you can make yourself a royal seat by putting one block down on the fattest side and one on either the medium or the tallest side. If you've got a blanket or a pillow or a bolster, you can then lay it over and make a nice little ramp for yourself. Or you can just use pillows, a couch, bed. Cover yourself with a blanket if you think you're going to get cool. And wherever you are, find that comfy place. Begin to close your eyes, focusing back on your breath. As we begin to go through the meditation, I'm going to switch my microphone, so don't worry if there's a little static. Okay. From here, close your eyes and notice your breath. Maybe coming back to the breaths we did at the beginning of our practice. Fill your lungs completely on your next inhale. Hold it and then release. On your in breaths, begin to notice the release of any tension or stress. On your exhale, imagine that stress leaving your body, pulling it out like a cloud. And on that inhale, bringing clean breaths. Imagining every breath bringing more relaxation. And we're going to begin our guided meditation. So again, make any last movements you need and settle in with eyes closed, finding that place of comfort. Imagine that bridge that you made just now. What does it look like? Imagine you're standing on that bridge. It's in the countryside, whatever that bridge is, however it looks. It's over a field. And on the other side of the field, you see a little forest on this bridge. You look up and you see the sky is an azure blue dotted with fluffy clouds. The spring sun beams down and you can feel the spring is coming. Warm rays providing both warmth and healing. From your place on the bridge, now you look back down to the edge of that field and you see a forest. The types of trees. It's calling your attention, whatever type of forest it is for you. And as your attention begins to focus on it, you begin to walk down the bridge towards the forest. As your foot touches the first step down, a wave of blissful tranquility 
passes through your body. And with the second step, you feel calm and relaxed. You step a third time, moving further into a state of relaxation. With your fourth step, you feel even more relaxed. And with your fifth step, you feel completely safe and are completely relaxed. Continue towards this beautiful forest with each step bringing calm and relaxation. Notice the trees. What do they look like? What smells do you notice from the forest? Maybe earthy pine or oak? Maybe a flowering tree for the spring? The trees are brimming with new life and vitality. You hear birds chirping and notice a butterfly fluttering by. The low shrubs at the edge of the forest bristle with small animals. What animals do you see? Your steps have guided you to the edge of the forest and you enter on a smooth pathway. With each continuing step, you notice how you feel increasingly refreshed. Walking feels effortless, like you're gliding. Any tiredness or tension just fades away with each step. Notice the trees again. Look up again, seeing how the tree trunks and branches reach the sky. The sunlight is dappled and falling through to the forest floor. Young leaves whisper in the breeze and the sunlight sparkles bringing warmth to the woods and shining a bright green spring light into the forest. Walk deeper into the woods, noticing it's lighter and welcoming. Begin to notice the animals and creatures. Perhaps one or more is coming to say hello. Notice what kind of animal or animals are coming to you. Do they have a name? You may speak to them and listen intently to what they say. They have a message for you. The creature is kind as it shares 
Any other wisdom with you now? And they say the last message to you now. When you're ready, you'll also say farewell to the animals and thank them for their time and insight. Remember, you can find them here again. And with that final farewell for now, look back at the path you took. You'll be going back the same way you came to retrace your steps out of the forest. Notice again the trees reaching to the sky. Is your creature in the sky or in the trees? The light coming through the trees again bathes the forest floor, perhaps lighting your creature as they wave farewell. And you continue on the path, returning. Notice how your energy has grown and expanded, and you feel ready for what comes next. The edge of the forest is in front of you. Take this time to savor the forest, what it looks like, how it feels on your skin, and any smells of your forest in the new spring. And then take the last few steps back to the forest edge. Looking back at the field where you began, Turn around to the forest and look back at the path you took. Reflect on it now for just another minute or two. And know that you can come back here anytime to find relaxation and insight. Savor these last few moments as you treasure the time you had in that forest with those creatures. And when you're ready, turn looking at the field and seeing your bridge and feeling comfort knowing that you will journey back home, across your bridge, in the meadow, notice the sun streaming down, and the butterflies still fluttering by, listen to the bird song, and feel the peace 
an energy that comes from this nice meadow. Perhaps taking a moment to notice a flower. The flower has grown and bloomed in the sun. What color is the flower? Does it have any smell? Do you choose to let it grow or to pick it and then take it with you? Both are perfectly fine. There are more flowers all around, but this one speaks to you. And wherever you are, taking a focus back from the flower and noticing there's just a few steps to the bridge. Take those steps now, savoring the moments you've had here. When you reach the bridge, as your foot touches the first part of the bridge, you notice you still feel completely safe and completely relaxed. With the second step, notice how relaxed your mind feels. And step a third time, noticing how relaxed your feet and legs are, even after gliding through the forest and the field. And now with your fourth step onto the bridge, you feel calm and relaxed throughout your whole body, noticing your body again, holding on to that relaxation. And on your fifth and final step, take that calmness and carry it through your breath. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Find your breath here and settle the feeling in your memory as you begin to return to the physical world, holding the peace and calm as you return across your bridge to the physical world where your body is relaxed right now. Slowly begin to bring awareness into the world around you. Notice where your body is touching the floor or chair. Notice the temperature of the air on your skin. Maybe the snugness of a blanket if you have it on you. Begin to hear the world around you again. Whether it is creatures like the forest, or the bustle of the world around you. And no matter where you are, hold that peace knowing that the rest of the world can continue on and you can still feel this calm relaxation. Once you fully come back to earth, start to make small movements with your fingers and toes, maybe rolling your wrists and ankles. And you can come into a full body stretch. Keep your eyes closed here and just stretch and feel your body after that workout and the relaxation. And take your hands and bring your palms together in front of you with your eyes closed still and rub your palms together, bringing some heat between your palms. 
Notice the sound of your palms as they rub against each other. Notice how it feels to touch fingers and palms. Notice the heat you build. And notice your speed. Is it slow or fast? Can you change it? Does it make a difference? And wherever you are, after another moment, keep your hands still together, palms together, no movement. Just feel how they feel touching. And then bring them up. You're going to place one palm on each of your eyes, just cupping gently so your palms are on your eyeballs underneath your eyelids. Your eyes are closed. Just gently resting and feeling just the weight of your hands on your eyes, maybe pressing them back, but don't actually press your eyeballs. Take some deep breaths here and just notice the heat from your hands. Give you a little eye pillow. Maybe come back to your breath one more time. When you're ready, you can take your hands down and maybe blink your eyes a little bit, noticing where you are now. And as you're ready, you can continue to rest here if that's what feels good to you. Or you can begin to roll over onto one side and just stay in the fetal position for a moment. Express gratitude to yourself for taking time for this and maybe think back to that creature that may have given you some insight on your journey and then when you're ready come into that comfortable seated position again wherever you are finding that nice relaxed seated position roll your shoulders back and down Notice how different this is now than it was when you started. And what we'll do is we'll do our inhales and exhales again. So inhale, take your arms up. And then just like at the beginning, drop those shoulders down. And then reach it up again. And pull the shoulders down. And inhale up. Exhale down. Pull it back up. Palms together one more time and bring them to your heart center. From here, come back to your intention you set at the beginning of our session. You can continue that for the day or maybe you take the advice from your creature and use that as your intention moving forward. Take a moment now to set that intention. And we'll seal it the same way that we did when we began. Inhaling arms up. Exhale, pull hands down one more time. We're going to do two inhales to seal. Deep inhale in and exhale out. And then the biggest inhale you've had all day. And let it all go. And with that, we've completed our Lunar New Year Zodiac Yoga. Take your thumb knuckles and bring them up to your forehead. As we express gratitude to ourselves for taking time for this practice. And I'll say again, though in the way of the yogis, the light and love and teacher in me. Honors and thanks, the light and love and teacher in all of you. Thank you for joining me for this Riffling Designs for Zen. And go in peace. Namaste. So it was a little different, and I hope you enjoy the meditation. I'm interested in your feedback. Thank you again for joining me for Riffling Designs. I am Riffling Designs everywhere. And next month, we'll be doing X-Men Yoga. So if you follow me on social media, you may know which X-Men I happen to be or which X-Person I happen to be. And I'm really looking forward to share that with you. Currently, 
our cosplaying yogis, C-O-S-P-L-A-Y-I-N apostrophe yogis, are doing an, a Marvel yoga challenge. So if you want to get in, it's happening right now on Instagram, the cosplaying yogis. Thank you for joining me again. It's good to see so many of you today. If there's any questions, we do have a couple minutes. And again, I look forward to the last weekend of March doing some X-Men cosplay yoga. I am totally taking suggestions for poses that you think would be really fun and powerful. Check out my YouTube where we've done things like staff yoga in the past. I think that there are some really cool hero yoga poses that we could do. So thank you again for joining me today. Thank you for support, providing support and for being with me as I've had technical support and I'll work to smooth that out for next time. So with that, thank you again for joining and I hope you have a peaceful and lovely weekend. Take care, everyone.